Well, welcome everybody. Uh, we've got one or two online. I can hear some echo, but that's okay. So there's David, Dominique, Emma, Lucas, Robin, and, and many others. Um, seeing as this is sort of an open mic, it's good if there's no external noise. So if you can tell the dog to stop barking or the baby to stop crying, that would be terrific. Um, this is just an Ask Bernie session, so it's open. You've got the floor and free to ask me anything you like. We've got half an hour, so it's a matter of participation. So I hope you can hear me. So has someone got a question for me? Or maybe you can't hear me. That we can hear you, Bernie. Okay. Well, I've got someone there. Who have I got? Uh, this is Lisa. I'm Dominic's partner. We just uh, signed in. Dominic yeah. Chaplin's partner. Oh, well, that's good. <clears throat> you got a question for me? Well, uh, we, we're here, I suppose, because uh, um, your email rang true for us. Uh, I think that's what you suggested a few years ago and we've, that's how we've been working ever since. So we were interested to hear how things are different now. Um, when you say that's what I suggested, do you mean we, which part of the portrait selling? Was it... Uh, I'll, hand I'll hand over to Dominic and, right. and he can uh, talk to you. Hey, All right. yeah, Bernie, this is Dominic here. Hi, um, man. How yeah, are you? I've, I've come along. Oh, pretty good, thanks. Pretty good, pretty good. You're up in um, yeah, Cairns. Up, up in Cairns, that's, that's right, yes, yes. Yeah, fantastic. And, uh, yeah, I've come on to, to a couple of your, your, your seminars. The last one was in Brisbane um, a couple of years ago, and, and um, yeah, I think you, you, you ran over, uh, went over the method that you've been... Uh, uh, you mentioned in your last email about uh, projecting the images on with a, yeah. with a with a slide projector and then you know choosing not. the likes and the dislikes and that sort of thing and selling from there. Was was I? Uh, that must have been a long time ago, Dominique. Um, I was, was it three years ago? I can't remember now. It was four years ago. Was it? <laughs> yeah. But, but basically, that, that that method works works pretty well, and and still works well for the people that come in. But um, these days, half the people who ring up just say, oh, I want all the focus on the USB. And, and if you just say, I won't do that, then, then you never hear from them again. So we're just interested to hear any, any, any new Yeah, uh, so, uh, okay. I've down to some of your seminars, but I guess you don't get up to Cairns uh, too often. No. Okay. So, so basically what you're talking about is not to do with uh, more the process of uh, selling. Uh, but more whether you should include files as a product within your selling. That's right, yes, yes. And, and uh, at the moment we just give like a low resolution file of anything they buy, which they can use for, for Facebook and whatnot. But, and we've just said no, full stop to selling um, you know, high res digital files of, of the main product. Okay, well that's fine. That, that's your choice. Um, personally, what I did. <laughs> There's a better way. We'd, we'd, we'd love to hear it. Yeah. Okay. Why? Why don't you? What's your fear? Um, well, it's just a one-off uh, income then, and then you don't really get the the, the print sales off it. Okay. How do you know? Well, we don't. We correct. Don't. Yes, that's why we're missing in. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's so correct. It's particularly, it, it's of interest at the moment. We just had an email from someone saying. Um, their half their family is in the Netherlands and they want to do uh, a photo shoot. They've got the photographer booked to do half the family in the Netherlands and they want someone here to do the other half of the family and send the digital images over to the photographer there who can manipulate them and do them. Yeah. So we haven't replied to that email yet. So what would what would your suggestion be? Well, this is where you get into trouble and. The reason I put that email, I was coaching a client a couple of weeks ago and uh, he'd got these enormous canvases in this very small selling room and they just looked over the top. I mean, they were great, the work was great, but it was the wrong process um, that he was going through. And one of the things was that he did like you, 
he gave a low res file to any image that was purchased. But if they wanted a high res image, his fee was $250 per file. And that's the only way he sold them. He didn't have an alternative. And, the, and I say, that's all fine. But as I questioned him and I said, okay, and he, and he made a sale of a canvas and two smaller ones, I said to him, so show me the images, show me the images that they liked and there were the three they had for the canvases but there were sort of five others. So I said, what opportunity did they have of purchasing them? And he said, well, all they wanted was files and, you know, they're $250 each. So no one's going to pay over $1,000 for five files. So within his selling system, he didn't have the ability to sell the files. If he did have, he could have made another four or five hundred dollars um, net profit, just like yourselves. So this is what I suggest, and this is what I did. If if you're out there and and you're not selling files, try it. That's what I did. I said, okay, you know, I know, I know what I think may happen, but I don't know what will happen. And so what I did, I put files as a product on my price list. And I thought, well, what I want is around about $100 a file because my 5 by 7 was $145 and they're two for 180 so they're around about $90 a hundred. So I put three products, three files on my price list. So it said up to five files were 495 up to 10 files were uh, 850 and all the files were 1250 and I thought, how can I sweeten all the files? Yeah. And because I thought all the files is okay, and if I get a sale, I'm going to put the price up. So I included what I called a, a keepsake signature little six by six album you can try. with 20 images in. And yeah. what I found was, and I measured it, my first 10 sales. Nine out of ten people didn't want files anyway. It was only a small majority wanted files, but I was able to make sales from them. But what it also did when people phoned up and said, "Oh, can we get the files?" So yeah, sure. The files are one of our products. The only time you decide what you want, of course, is when you see your photos. Uh, but of course, we'll give the opportunity to purchase the files. So. It became a product and from then on I just left it in, but it was never a concern once I'd tested it and proven to myself that it wouldn't diminish my average sale, which was the whole point, right? So yeah. I, But I really started continuing maximizing my sale. But you see, photographers have a fear of trying things because other photographers don't do it or they have a lot of uncertainties. I work on a test and measure base, test it, is it working? Yes it is, continue doing it, no it's not, stop doing it. So does, <laughs> does that sort of answer your question? Yeah, I, I suppose, I, I think because it's always been such a no-no in the past, we've been more um, a sticklers for not, not doing it. So, so in future, when someone phones you up and says, "Ah, oh, we, you know, we're looking at the possibility of maybe getting the files. Do you, can we get the files?" You say, "Yeah, that's part of our product range." But obviously, the only t when, the only time you decide what you want is when you see your photos. So that's the way we we uh, I operated. I tested it as I did everything in my studio. How can you make decisions unless you know? Making presumptions of how the customer will react is wrong because you just don't know. Yeah. yeah.
So do, do you have any concerns about the customer's ability to produce a, a print nicely from your high res file? And, well, look, uh, display it, and then no. say, "Well, oh, this is going to be great if he, if they haven't done a particularly good job of that." Uh, I was never quite that precious, actually, with my images, because my feeling was they weren't mine. I may have taken them, but they weren't mine. Yeah. They belonged to the customer. So the thing with the files. Let me just explain another thing to you. The way you maximize your sale at your portrait, when you do your portrait sale, is putting processes in place, and I'll talk about those in a minute. And it's very important to have the processes in place. So um, I'll go through the, the six, six Ps in a sec. The thing is, with the files, I'll give an example. A year or so ago, I photographed uh, my a friend of my daughter's wedding, and they paid seven and a half thousand dollars. And I produced. Okay, I'll just mute everybody and talk. So I've just muted everybody so I can talk. I hope you can hear me. Otherwise, I'm talking to myself. So my daughter had a friend. I photographed a wedding. They paid seven and a half thousand dollars for a wedding album, and I've always included a CD of high-res images whenever anyone's got an album, or if they just wanted a CD of images, that was fine. So uh, two or three months later, uh, my daughter's girlfriend sent us some six by four prints. Obviously, she'd got them printed at Office Works. And yet, they weren't the best. They were pretty crap, to be quite honest. My daughter put them in a cheap frame and put them around the house. There were three photos of a girlfriend and her as a bridesmaid. So I'd made a seven and a half thousand dollar sale. I'd also supplied the images. What she did with them, it wasn't really my concern. That's her choice, isn't it? So yes, you've got to accept it that if they do actually if you do actually sell your files, they're at liberty to do whatever they want. And just one more point about the files. In my portrait selling system, it does state, and the customer knows this, that I only keep the files for 28 days. So when it comes to sale time, they know that that's decision time. If they want to buy the files, they can. If they don't buy them, they know that they may never have the opportunity to purchase later. So I don't keep anything. I don't have gigabytes or terabytes of files all backed up waiting for someone maybe to order a 7x5 15 years from now. So the customer knows that. So I'm just going to unmute, un unmute everyone. So anyone can say something to me and ask a question, but if you can keep the background noise to a minimum, that would be great. So has anyone got a question on that system? So has anyone got a question on that system? No? No. no. So do you find people tend to buy a mixture of files and prints and prints files and prints and prints? How I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. Didn't yeah. quite get it. Who am I, who am I talking to? Sorry, this is Dominic here again. Yeah. Yep. I'll just put you on speaker, Dominic, so that. Um, uh, can you talk now? That'll be fine. All right. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. Just to, to get rid of the echo. Just files or, sorry. Do you tend to find you end up selling just files or a mixture of files and prints or mixture? As I had, ninety percent would buy a wall portrait. Yeah. And didn't even and ask about the files. The files after. They didn't even ask about the files. Yeah. Do you, Do you find that your customers actually know the difference between high res and low res and what I, they I've, I'm, from yeah. and what? I've never understood why photographers do low res files. I do not understand it. Can you explain to me why you give them low-res files? 
Well, because they load up onto social media a lot better. When's the last time you put a picture on Facebook full res? Full res? Yeah. We've never done that. Well, try it. Facebook is a massive engine that converts the files to a file an appropriate size that will work well on Facebook. I, I've never converted files to be on Facebook. Try it. Okay. That's if it's a normal size. I'm not talking 36 megapixel or 26 megapixel or whatever. And who's shooting that size anyway? Why is the need to do that if you know I'm talking wedding portrait photography? Yeah. You know, my one uh, Canon 1D, which I've had for many years, shoots 8 megapixel. And that's certainly a quality big enough to suffice a wedding album with the largest print of around about 11 by 14. Yeah. So I, I, you don't have to make the images low res. And by the way, I think even for, even for emailing, you know, if they want to email their relatives in in England or something, um, it can be uh, frustrating for the people on the other end if the files are quite large. If they want to email them, well, if they get high, re you know, higher res uh, images, then uh, some some people will still have difficulty uh, viewing those images via email because the file sizes are quite big. Well, all I know is if they've loaded them onto a Windows platform, uh, there's a click which says email and gives you an option of reducing the size down or leaving it the same size and it reduces it for you. I don't think it's your problem. Do you? Yeah, that, yeah that, that's a fair comment. We we uh, would be guilty of assuming that our customers don't always know uh, the best way to. Well, do that's it. right, and you're assuming you're assuming a lot of things. You're assuming that um, you know that it'll diminish your sales if you offer them. I'll tell you what to do. This is what to do. I'll talk to you next week or whatever uh, or tomorrow uh, and. Let's put it on your price list because I'll check what your prices are at present. We'll set up a little, you know, files, costing your files. We'll try it and then we'll see what result we get. Mm -hmm. Does that sound fair there enough? There we go. Yeah. And if it works, see, the problem is you've got now, if pe these people phoning up and say, oh, we just want higher res files, what do you say to them? Or we just want files. Yeah, we lose them. We you lose, lose them. them. Straight away. Yeah. Well, they're going to go somewhere else, aren't they? Yes. You lose them straight away rather than say, yeah, sure. You know, have you seen our website, by the way? What did you like about the photography? That's great. We specialize in that casual photography that you like. And, <laughs> get a, a, and, and you know that th they only ask about the files because they don't know what else to ask. We've gone through all these stages yeah. where people used to say, how much is a 10 by 8? And then they'd say, uh, do you shoot raw? And then they'd say, what size megapixel cam do you use, camera do you use, and so on. It's just the first question. It's how you handle it. That's the important thing. So it's all about test and measure. And I, I just go into that a little bit with a, a, a little slide thing I've put together here. And I hope you can sort of see it on the screen, can you? Can you um, see? Can you yeah. see see on the screen? You're on a computer. I've got, yeah, I can see the steps to maximising your portrait sales. Yeah. Okay, so now we've just moved to the six P's. Uh, the can you see that the six P's should be yeah. up. So there's six steps that take you to number six, which is your presentation, which is in the sales room, which is the most important room that you have.
this is where everything comes to maximizing the sale. So, and I'll, I can only do this briefly because I've only allocated half an hour for this and then if anyone wants to type in a question, maybe they can do that. I'll just open the chat button. Um, I think you'll be able to uh, type in if you want. Um, so the positioning, first of all, is where you're positioned in the marketplace. So your positioning is one of the most important things. It can be positioning stra uh, slash branding. It's where you sit. Are you at the cheap end? If you are, start to move out of it. In your area, are you the most expensive? You've got to know where you sit there and then your photography had better match that position. If you position yourself as the most expensive, which is what I slowly lifted my position to being, I had to lift my photography as well. And I'm just talking in my area, not in the whole world, not in the whole of Australia, but in my area. So once I lifted the photography, then with my systems, you have to prepare the client for your processes. Now because you've got your uh, positioning right, this is where you run your studio, not your customers. Once you let your customers run the studio, they'll run all over you. This is where you tell the customers, this, this is my process, this is what I do, this is what I want you to wear. It's not about asking the customer, where would you like them taken? Do you want them indoors or outdoors? Do you want a light background? Do you want a dark background? What do you want? It's a matter of standing up and saying, well, this is what we do. You may have noticed from the website that we specialize in black and white portraiture. Black and white we feel is timeless. We like to put it into wall portraiture because that's the best value because you'll see it every day and so on. So you're standing up and saying, this is what we do. So you, you can prepare your customer with your processes. You sort out your products. And if you specialize in wall portraiture, you should have three different products to offer them. Could be a canvas, could be a collage of uh, acrylic, and it could be a collage of matted frame prints. And then get your pricing right. And where you start with your pricing is to your um, mindset factor, I call it, and it's where you just cringe a little bit about, gee, that's a bit expensive, unless you can take a leap of faith. In my case, I put my 7 by 5 inch print up to $145 overnight. I took a leap of faith. I thought, God, who's going to pay that? But I stuck with it. And what happened was, slowly but surely I started to attract the type of customer I wanted. And the reality is also, I didn't sell many 7 by 5s I sold wall portraits. So sometimes you have to take a leap of faith or set your prices where it's just, um, it just sits comfortably with you and you just feel a bit of cringe factor. That's with your pricing. Once you start to sell products, put your pricing up, especially core products. And then your presentation, which is your sales session, everything has led to this. And the way you do that is by putting in a couple of key letters, and these may be difficult to read, it, it doesn't matter, it's just what I give people I coach, these letters. There's a confirmation letter, which is key letter one. This just tells the customer what I want them to wear, what we're going to do, where I sit in the marketplace. I'm one of Australia's leading photographic studios. What we specialize in, what happens after the session, how long it takes for you to sit down and work out your order, to have you and your partner there, all the decision makers, revisit the website, have a look and you're going to have a good time. I'm sure you'll enjoy the session because 
most of my clients tell me that years later, the portrait created by a studio is their most cherished possession. So that's the, the first key letter. The second key letter is a frequently asked questions letter, which I give them uh, when we make a time for them to come back. So this is just laying out your rules of engagement. This is about your studio. Can I get a CD of the images? Yes, we specialize in world deco, but we do make files for purchase. How, how much are, how much are your prints? This is the price of a print. We have a right size guarantee, so don't worry about the size of the, the photographs. Um, you can always bring them back. How long do the orders take? Is it possible to lay by? Do you take credit cards? Can I order a later date? You may order photographs at a time later than the viewing time, but please, we keep your files for 28 days. That, please note that we keep your files for 28 days after your session. So they've got all this information. They're all primed, and then they come in for the sales session. And that's the way you maximize your sales. Okay, so I can't see anyone's typed any discussion and that wasn't working last week either. So what I'll do, I'll unmute everybody and if you want to ask me a question, uh, feel free to do so. So I think all the, uh, you're all unmuting. So has anyone got a question? On anything? On anything? <laughs> on what? On what I had for breakfast, had or for breakfast. what I'm going to have for dinner? Are you all stuck? No, we do, we do, um, um, similar to you, we do send out uh, uh, frequently asked questions and uh, uh, letters in a similar fashion to you. The only thing we're not doing is giving the option of the images on this. So we're, we're happy to work on that and try it out. Yeah, well, try it and let me know. We'll, you know, if you send me an email, we can start to make sure we get the pricing appropriate um, to what what your others are, Emma. All right. Have we got any other questions? I know you're all hungry. Okay. Well, let's. That's great. Please feel free. If you want to, uh, if you want to uh, send me uh, an email, you got any questions? Uh, I'm here. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you all for rocking up. Thank you. We'll see you next time you're in Brisbane. All right. Cheers.